You came here for a praise this morning? Oh, now y'all got to do better than that. God woke you up this morning, and he started you on your way. You're a living testimony. Won't you give God some praise? Give God a 30-second minute of praise. He has been good to you all this week, down through the week. You got a house to go to. You got a car to go and drive. You got a job to go to. Even if you retired, you got a pension. You ought to be happy this morning. Give him a grave. Come on now. Come on now. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I'll be glad and rejoice in it. You ought to be glad this morning. You ought to give the highest praise. He woke you up this morning. He woke you up this morning. We thank him this morning. We thank him. I got a testimony this morning about something. I'm so proud this morning that he's just out there blessing folks. He's doing what he's supposed to do. He got your kids. You can lie. You, ain't know, you know where they at. You know where you at. You got your right mind. You ought to be glad you give him praise this morning. I just thank him this morning. You know the devil come to steal, kill, and destroy, but you know the Lord came so you can have life and life more abundantly. Let's go into prayer right now. Father, right now we come thanking you for this day, Father. We thank you for this awesome church, Father, that sits right here where we, right by the freeway, Father, where people can see, Father. We thank you for everyone in here this morning, Father. We thank you for our pastor. We want you to crown him, keep crowning him with wisdom, Father. We want you to go out here and bless everybody, Father. And we want you to put the arm of God around everyone in this house this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. How many know everything that you have belongs to the Lord today? Yes, sir. Let me ask you again. How many you know everything that you are and ever hope to be is all because of God?
Come on, y'all, give Brother Rosa a great big hand, would you? <laughs> Come on, put your hands together. Oh, when it seems that the doors of progress have closed in your face, in your face. and no matter what you do, your friends don't appreciate I tell you what you do You just steal away And go down, go down on your knees Tell God Tell God have mercy Please tell him Come on come on, Jesus. Please Lord I want you to come Come on and see about me Come on, put them together, everybody. Say it again. When it seems that the doors of progress have closed in your face, your face. and no matter, no matter what you do, what you do. Your
That's right, right there. I said, that's right, right there. That's a good place to give God some praise. Come on, praise him for this week coming up. Whatever the enemy try, you already put a praise on it. transportation, your meal, and your show ticket. You can reserve your seat by paying in full, or you can put down a $25 deposit by July the 31st. Now, if you choose to put down a deposit, your balance will need to be paid by Sunday, August the 28th. Payment method is only cash and check. So please see the relationship ministry after service today if you are interested in taking the trip with us on October the 1st to see the sight and sound in Branson, Missouri. Also, after altar call and prayer, our uh, youth will be able to go next door after altar call and altar prayer. So thank you so much. Let us continue to praise God. Let us continue to lift up those our sick members, our bereaved family members all over this land and country. It's not just about us, but we have to remember others. That's our Christian duty. So let us continue to lift those up in prayer and continue to praise God. May you have a blessed week. Lord says the same. I'll see you next Sunday. Amen. Put your hands together for God one time. Hallelujah. Amen. I do want to take a quick moment to emphasize Sunday school. Amen. Sister Sylvia still here. Sister Sylvia Stewart, amen. Those of you that are in the building, there she is right there. She is our Sunday school superintendent. Put your hands together for her. Amen. She has been keeping our Sunday school department going for two and a half years throughout the pandemic. And for two and a half years, many of you know, we were on Zoom all of that time. And then here recently, we opened back up uh, for Sunday school here in the building. So I want to encourage you, wherever you are, amen, whether you're in here or on uh, digitally, uh, 
participate in Sunday school. Amen. Sunday school is a place where you can ask questions and get your questions answered. Amen. Sunday school is done at a pace that is different from a Sunday morning worship service. So if you need to be in Sunday school, and let me help you out real quick, you need to be in Sunday school. Amen. We're here every Sunday morning in this building right here. We have a bridge builders class that goes next, that's next door. You can ask Sister Sylvia about that class. Uh, Commentary Sunday School is in this class every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. We have a Commentary Sunday, class, Sunday School class on Zoom every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. When I'm out of town, I'm usually in Zoom Sunday School. Amen. So not, no matter where you go, where you are, you can participate in Sunday School. It is needed for yours and mine spiritual growth. Amen. Amen. We do want, we have a superstar in the church now. Is Mother Calhoun here? She's not here. Amen. That's okay. Uh, Pastor Byron Calhoun, King Solomon's own, amen. He has recorded, amen, a CD, and our own mother Calhoun is being featured on there, amen. Singing one more sunny day, amen. And so you can go out and get this on all the digital uh, platforms, Apple Play, Google Play. Go out there and search Pastor Byron Calhoun and friends and look for that uh, recording, and you can download that. Amen. And hear our own very, uh, our very own sister, Mother Calhoun, on wax. Amen. And so we're excited. I'm going to go out there and check it out this afternoon. Amen. It's prayer time. Stand to your feet. Prepare your hearts for prayer. Amen. Prepare your hearts for prayer. Hallelujah. Consecrate yourself. Amen. Consecrate yourself in the presence of God. As we're standing all over the building. If you hadn't lived long enough oh, man. to call on Almighty God, all I'm going to say to you, just keep breathing in and out. Right. And there's going to come a day that you're going to have to say, come on, Jesus. Come on and see about me. Sometimes in life, we can run up against problems that we don't know how to solve. But you have to go down on bending knees and ask for a little help from the problem solver. Oh, yes, I stopped by to tell you he has solved many problems for me. I, I, I tell everyone, I tell everyone, they ask me, say, Reverend Hall said, you have been doing, you have done a lot of things in life. You have experienced a lot of things. Uh, what university did you get your de degree from? Uh, I didn't get it from Harvard. I didn't get it from Baptist. I didn't get it from Philander Smith. But my degree I got. Or stand with the best of all of those. I got my degree off my knees. And all I had to do was say, come on, Jesus, and see about me. <laughs> I'll stop by to tell you, he may not come when you want him, Woo! but he has a way. Oh, yeah. He has a way of showing up right on time. With, 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 with heads bowed and our hearts lifted and our minds pointed towards Calvary. Eternal Father, the creator and the maker of everything. The life giver, also the life taker. We come right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Our heart are heavy this morning because I'm dealing with a burden. But I know, I know that you're the burden bearer. It was you who brought me a mighty long way. And Father God, I know you hadn't brought me this far to turn your, your back on me. And right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want you to stop by my family 
Ooh, Lord, and, and he's trouble man right now. And bad Satan right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I call you not because you are hard of hand, and, but I call you because you said when I need you, I could go to the throne boldly and, and call on your holy name. And, and right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, please, sir, and stop by my children's house. Uh, bind Satan right now. And lift heavy burdens right now. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, master, Master, we are dealing, Master, uh, in our country uh, with everything going on. Uh, if it's not one thing, uh, it's another one, but good God Almighty, I remember reading that in the book of Matthew, uh, and along about the 24th chapter, and you told me, oh Lord, uh, to observe all of these things, and they was going to come to pass, but, but right now, Lord, and I need you, I need you, Lord, and King Solomon needs you, good God Almighty, and Christians everywhere need you. We are dealing, and, and we are reeling and rocking, and in untoned land, oh, gracious Father. Every time we turn around, uh, good God Almighty, there's a plague here, uh, there's a plague there, uh, but good God Almighty, you know all about the plague, uh, Good God Almighty, because by your stripes, uh, whoo, by your stripes, uh, we are healed. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, good God Almighty, I know, I know, I know uh, that you the doctor uh, in a sick room. Uh, good God Almighty, for four long weeks, uh, I was dealing with an issue. Uh, good God Almighty, last Tuesday, you woke me up uh, about 3 o'clock, uh, and that issue was gone. And I know you the prayer hand God. Uh, I know you the prayer hand God. Uh, I call you uh, when I'm doing bad. Uh, I call you uh, when everything is well. Uh, good God, I'm mad. And I just want to take time out uh, and say thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, Thank you for Pastor. Thank you for King Solomon, Master. And one of these days, one of these days, I ain't going to be able to stand in King Solomon no more. But good God Almighty, I ain't going to be able to call on your name in King Solomon no more. But I want to be able to call you enough that when my day come, you will say, well done. Oh, well done, well done, uh, my good and faithful servant. Uh, just want to thank you, Master, for being our burden bearer. Thank you for being our heavy load carrier. Then, Master, when it's yours to call, we want to be able to answer to your call. These are other blessings we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming again. It may be in the morning, maybe night or night. Yes, he is. One more thing I want to tell you. When Jesus, Jesus is coming again soon, it may be in the morning, maybe night or night or noon. I don't know just when it may come. I'm trying to get my He's coming, yes, he is coming soon. When Jesus
and he went away. Went away. He told, told his people, I want to. And he went away. went away, he told, told his people, I want you to watch and watch pray. And pray. Again, again, he's coming, he's coming, again, again, I know he is, he's coming, I know he is, again. just like he said, he's coming, one day, again, he's coming again, he's coming, somebody said, again, when he comes, he's coming, he'll be riding, again, on a great horse, he's coming, somebody else said, again, when he comes, he's coming, be riding again. out on the cloud. He's coming. See, I don't know again. just how it may come. He's coming. I'm just trying again. to have my work done. He's coming. Somebody else said again. when he comes, he's, he's going to step out again. from that cloud. He's coming. going to plant one foot again. out on the land. He's going to plant one foot again. out on the sea. He's and he's going to call, again. call all time he's come to again. eternity. Again. If you ain't ready, it's going to be too late. Again. If you ain't ready, it's going to be too late. Again. Time is right now to get ready. Again. Time is right now he's to get ready. Because he's so coming. He's, come he's coming again. again. What about you? Coming again, he's coming. you ain't ready. Again. Get your house, he's coming. get it in order. Again. He's coming again, he's coming, he's coming again. again. If you ain't ready, he's coming. gonna be too late. Again. If you ain't ready, he's coming. gonna be too late. Again. If you ain't ready, he's gonna be too late. Again. Time is right now, time is right now. Cause he's He's coming again. He's coming again. He's coming again. But one day, one day, he's coming. He's coming. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you know that Jesus is coming? Yep. If you ain't ready, you better get your house in order. Cause he's coming. And he's coming soon. Yep. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming soon. He's coming. He's coming. Again. Get it again. He's coming. He's coming. Again. Bring it down. He's coming. He's coming. Again. He's coming again. He's coming. One day. Again. He's going to step out. He's coming. From that cloud. Again. If you ain't ready. He's coming. going to be. If you ain't ready, it's gonna be too late. Time is right now. Time is right now. To get ready. Sometimes times get hard for you. He's coming. He's coming. Sometimes times get hard. Too hard to bear. But you ain't ready. It's gonna be too late. If you ain't ready, it's gonna be too late. Again. Get your house. He's coming. Get it in order. Again. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Again. He's gonna step out. He's yep. On that cloud. Again. He's gonna plant one foot out on the land. Again. 
He's gonna plant one foot he's come out on the sea. Uh, yep. He's gonna call. He's gonna call all time. Okay. To eternal If you ain't ready, you ain't ready. It's gonna be too late. Uh -huh. You ain't ready. Okay. Yep. It's gonna be too late. Time is right now okay. to get ready. One day, one day, he's coming, he's coming, yes he is coming soon. Yep. <laughs> Amen. We're standing all over the building. Reverend Lee say, you ain't ready. I don't know about you, preacher, but I'm ready. Amen. I don't want to go today, but I'm ready to go. Hallelujah. We can put a, give me another 35 years and we can get on up out of here. Amen. But I am ready to go. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, thank you for blessing us with another day. Hallelujah. It's all because of your mercy and your grace. Hallelujah. God, you've forgiven us of all of our sin. You've taken care of us. You've provided for us. You've been so good. Hallelujah. You've been a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Thank you, Lord, for your graciousness. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your ever presence. Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. So we simply say thank you. Hallelujah. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we praise the Lord. We magnify you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Our bodies are your temples. We thank you because you indwell us. Thank you, God, for being ever-present. Hallelujah. Even in the time of trouble. Hallelujah. You ease our trouble in mind. I thank you for that. Thank you, God, for delivering us and setting us free. Lord, we just ask that you would prepare us to be people uh, that are prepared to live in these last days. Help us to be a light into this dying world. Help us, God, to be what the world needs. We thank you for your anointing upon our lives, the ability of your spirit to move in us and to use us, hallelujah, to be a blessing. Let us not forget where our help come from. Hallelujah. Let us slow our lives down and pay attention to the season that we live in. We thank you, hallelujah, for saving us and cleansing us. Thank you for saving our families, even our children and grandchildren, God. Thank you for sanctifying them, calling them at a young age. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Shake somebody's hand behind you, in front of you, or to the side of you, and tell them good morning. I'm so glad to see you in church. Hallelujah. Shake somebody else's hand. Tell them I'm so glad to see you in church. Hallelujah. If you're like me, you've been out two and, two and a half years. It's been a long time. You may be seated. Amen. I'm glad to be in church. Amen. In the building in church. Hallelujah. Me and Brother Zinnerman was talking before we got started, and I was just sharing with him about how I'm just excited to be here. Amen. And I, I was sharing with him that no matter what I do or where I go in life, there's no place like church. I don't care what you got going on. Only what you do for Christ is going to last. Ushers, you may be seated. Amen. You can accomplish great things, but I promise you, young people, only what you do for Christ is going to last. On your dying bed. Amen. Nobody's going to care about the vacations you went on or how much money you accumulated. Come on. Or how many businesses you had. You're an entrepreneur. Nobody's going to care nothing about that. Hallelujah. When it's time to go, the only thing that matters is what have you done for the Lord. Amen. And why is that? Because you're going to be seeing him soon. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to pick up where I left off last week talking about the deceitfulness of riches. I shared with you last week at the beginning that 
uh, Paul told Timothy that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And uh, let me say it again. Money is not the root of all evil. It is the love of money. Okay, it is these pe people who want to have a, a certain type of relationship with money. It is the, it is a wrong relationship with money. Uh, that's the problem. Money itself, money is neither bad or good. It's neither one of them. You know, it's, it's, it's whose hand it is, it's in that, that matters. And so it is the love of money uh, that is the root of all evil. And then I talked to you about, I emphasize, I'm going to emphasize this real quick, is that, you know, the world is moving towards a one a one monetary system, amen. The Antichrist is going to put the whole world on one religion. He's going to put the whole world on one money system. And you, he's going to offer a mark. He's going to take the mark off of your debit card, and they're going to put it in your hand and your forehead. And uh, if you don't take the mark, you're not going to be able to buy or sell, okay? So we want to prepare ourselves and prepare more so our young people because I don't think we're going to be here. But we have to begin to educate the body of Christ, for when that day comes, because it's going to be very challenging when you have a two-month-old baby and you got to choose between Jesus and milk. You got you to make a decision. Amen. Whether I, do I feed my family or do I obey the Lord? Huh? Do I, do I uh, work and, and get this mark so I can get my paycheck direct deposited to me? And so I can pay my mortgage, or do I force me and my family out into the street? I mean, which one do I want? Do I want the mark? Well, here's the bottom line. Do I want the mark or do I want Christ? Huh? And in this age of compromise that we live in, where everybody making an excuse for everything, you're going to have a hard time when that day comes. And, and, and listen, I don't care what these uh, jokers talking about on TikTok. It's coming. It's coming, okay? So we, ha we have to begin to train the church and teach the church about money. And so uh, money is not evil or, or good. The love of money is the problem, okay? And so today, I'm going to just kind of finish up. I want to first lay a foundation of, of how blessed you are. And say, you always talking about that because I'm going to talk about it till you get it, Okay? And I'm telling you, you're blessed. Psalms 112, verse 1. Psalms 112, verse 1 says this here. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. Verse number 2 says, his descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Psalms 112 and 3. Look what it says. Put it up there. Wealth and riches will be in that man's house. You ask yourself, well, how much money I'm supposed to have till you realize the wealth and riches? That's it. Now, here's what we make the mistake at. I'm going to keep on. I got to move briskly. We put a dollar figure on that. Don't put no dollar figure on that. He, but he promises you that wealth and riches will be in your house. Okay? You are wealthy. And you are rich. If you're a believer, yes, you are. You are. Don't put a dollar figure on it. Just know that you have more than enough. You have abundance. Say it with me. I have abundance. Okay, say it one more time. I have abundance. Thank you. Okay, so wealth and riches are in your house. Come on. They're in your house. Let's keep going. John 10.10, 10, Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He said that I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And when Jesus says he's giving you abundant life, he's talking about it in every area, okay? But now he's talking about spiritual stuff. Oh, Lord Jesus. Every area, every area of your life, you're supposed to have abundance. There it is up there. Take a look at it. Come on, John 10, 10, for you all on Facebook. John 10, 10, Jesus came that you may have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Deuteronomy 28, chapter, one, Deuteronomy 28, chapter verse number 1. Now, in Deuteronomy 28, I'm just kind of going through some things. Deuteronomy 28, that whole chapter is the blessing and curse of the law. Amen. If you ever get an opportunity to read it, you need to read that whole chapter. Because in there, Moses details the blessing and the cursing of the law. The first 14 verses talk about the, the blessings of obedience. The last 40 or whatever verses talk about the curses of disobedience. 
And there's a whole lot more drama that come with being disobedient to God than there are being obedient to God. So what I want to do, Deuteronomy 28, verse number 1. Come on, they got to they gotta see the scriptures. Here we go. So Deuteronomy 28 and verse number 1. I, I, I didn't put it on here. I got to have it up there. I can't do it until I see it up there. Okay, here we go. Y'all ready? Now, these scriptures detail with very specific detail how blessed you are. I'm telling you. You got to get this. Here we go. Now it shall come to pass, watch this, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Now watch this. That's freeze frame. One second. I want you to remember this verse. He's telling you that if you will obey the voice of the Lord your God and observe the, the, his commandments, then all the stuff I'm getting ready to tell y'all, it's going to happen in your life. Y'all see that big word up there, if you. Somebody say, if you. That's a song by Silk, ain't it? It is, if you. I, I can't wear the words, so I can't sing it for y'all, but that's a song by Silk. I ain't going to do it. So he said, if you obey and you observe my commandments, remember that verse. Go to verse number two. Here we go. We got to go through this. Here we go. Watch this. So, and all, watch this, if you, he said, if you obey him and, and, and observe his commandments, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Overtake mean ambush. Overtake ambush mean you're going to get them whether you want them or not. Come on, when God bless you, you bless so good. Come on. The blessings, you ain't got to hunt no blessings down. The blessings of God will hunt you down. The blessings of God will hide behind bushes and jump out on you when you ain't even looking for them. Come on. That's what this means. That's what this means. It means when you, when you obey me, I'm going to bless you. You ain't got to find me. I'm going to find you. You ain't got to hunt for a job. I'm going to make the job come to you. You ain't got to ask for a promotion. I'm going to promote you anyhow. Come on. That's what he's telling you. Come on. He said, because you, oh, well, here we go again. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Verse number three. Keep going. He said, bless you shall be in the city. Come on. That's North Little Rock. Come on. I don't, know about you. I don't know about you, but I'm blessed in every city I go in. I was in New York two weeks ago, and I found out the Lord was there, and I was blessed in New York. Come on. I'm blessed in Little Rock. I'm blessed in North Little Rock. It don't matter. I'm blessed in every city I go in. Then he says, and bless shall you be in the country. I was blessed when I went to Carlisle. What's that place you're from? Seton Dump. I'm blessed in Seton Dump. I'm blessed in Lone Oak. I'm blessed in Texarkana. I'm blessed in the city, and I'm blessed in the country. Keep on going. Verse number four. Watch this. Then he says, come on, verse number four. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. How many of y'all got kids? Your kids are already blessed. Come on, your kids are already blessed. I don't care what the doctor says. Your kids are blessed. You're blessed. He said the produce of your ground and the increase of your herd, that means every animal you got in your stall, all them going to be blessed. You got a lassie in your house, lassie is blessed. Hallelujah. You better spay and neuter that dog and cat because they're going to have babies all over the place. Come on. And it ain't because they're having sex. It's because you're blessed and everything that's around you is blessed. <laughs> Y'all don't believe that, do you? That's why you stuck where you at. Come on. He said the increase of your cattle. Everybody, everything, everybody going to be blessed. Your cattle, the offspring of your flocks. Verse number five, keep going. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl, all the work that you do. Come on, verse number six, keep going. Keep going. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. I was blessed when I came in the church, and I'm going to be blessed when I walk up out the church. My job might be crazy. I'm blessed when I go in the VA, and I'm blessed when I come out the VA. It don't matter how crazy they act while I'm up in there. I'm blessed coming in, and I'm blessed going out. Come on, I'm blessed at the family reunion when I go. I'm blessed when I leave the family reunion. I'm blessed when the devil starts to attack me. I'm blessed when the devil finishes attacking me. I hope you're getting God's ideal on this. Keep going. Verse, next verse, verse number seven. Watch this. The Lord will cause your enemies who, who rise against you to be defeated before your face. How many of y'all got an enemy? When you bless, God going to make sure that your enemies... Do not succeed. Come on. Look what he says. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. 
That means my enemy is going to come at me through that door, but by the time God gets through with them, they're going to have to leave out of every door. Why? Because I'm blessed. Keep going. Verse number 8. The Lord will command. Somebody say command. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. That means God's going to speak a blessing over your life. When he says a command, he's talking about a law, a rule. The blessing on your life is going to work. Come on, whether you work or don't work. Come on. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. Watch this here. And he will, God, I didn't finish that verse. Go back one. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Keep going. Verse number nine. Give it to me. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to him. Look, he will establish you as holy. Come on. Just as he has sworn to you. Watch this. If. Somebody say if. Oh, there go that big word again. Here we go. There. Oh, Lord. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Verse number 10. Keep going. Then, oh, watch this. Then all, somebody say all. Then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. Listen, God is going to bless you so good that no matter who you come in contact, they're going to know that you have spent time with the Lord. And they're going to know this man has got to have spent some time with the Lord because can't nobody else walk in no blessing like this unless God be with them. And, watch this, and they shall be afraid of you. Huh? Keep going, verse number 11. And the Lord will grant you plenty. Somebody say plenty. Man, look how good. And the Lord will, plenty, will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body. In the increase of your lives, there's the increase. And in the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Verse number 12, come on. The Lord will open to you his good treasure. How many of y'all need for God to open up some treasure in your way? Come on. Come on, God, just pour something. Give me something. Yeah, give me anything. Come on. The heavens to give the rain to your land in its season. How many of y'all need God to rain on you? Come on. He's promising you right here. And to bless all the work of your hand. It don't matter whether you the CEO or flipping the burgers. God going to bless you in doing it. You shall, watch this. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. You're supposed to be the lender, not the borrower. Come on. You're supposed to be the one pouring the stuff into somebody else's cup, not always got your cup out needing something. Why? Because you are blessed. Keep going. Here we go. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Listen, learn how to get off from the back of the bus and sit in the front of the bus. Come on. Stop flying coach. Fly first class sometime. Well, I ain't got that kind of money. Put on your TV and do it. That was a joke. Don't pull on your TV. You have to put them, them disclaimers in there. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If, what? If, somebody say if. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, one more scripture. So shall you not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or the left to go after other gods or to serve them. Now. Verse number one back up there, 28 and one. I'm trying to establish how blessed you are. Now, how many of y'all believe that you're that blessed? Okay. Hang on. My next question is, how many of you all have accomplished the if? I don't see no hands in here no more. I hear somebody say, I'm working on that part. I'm 56. I've been working for 50 years. How many of y'all still working on the if? Now, let me ask you a question real quick. How many of y'all want 1 through 14? I want all of it. I got to move on briskly. I had to take you here to help you out and understand your blessing because if I can get you to understand your blessing, I can help you deal with money. From the, for the rest of your life, I don't care who you are, I don't care what, nobody told you 
If you a believer, take the if out of that. Are you changing the word of God? You sit your raggedy self down and let me finish. First of all, you ain't accomplished the if yet. You've been ifing all your life. Trying to do the commandments of the Lord so you can get verses 2 through 14. And you ain't got there yet. Well, I, I may not be what I ought to be, but at least I ain't what I used to be. You still ain't got it done. And you're wasting your life trying to get some blessings and fulfill a commandment that was never meant for you to fulfill anyway. You need to go to Galatians chapter 3. I'm going to give you this, and I'm going to leave you alone. Watch this here. The Bible says in more than one location that Christ is the end of the law for right standing with God. What man could not do because of his flesh, God sent his only son in the likeness of sinful flesh to accomplish good God Almighty to accomplish what you and I couldn't accomplish so what am I telling you I'm telling you Jesus took care of the if for you and Paul said Christ has redeemed us from verses 15 through 56, I don't know what the last one is, but verses 15 through 56, Christ has delivered you from all of that. Why? So that the blessings of verses 28, 1 through 14 might come upon the Gentiles, not because you live in right, but because you believe in Jesus Christ. Now, I can't make it no more plainer than that. I mean, I... I can't make it no more plainer than that. You are blessed. All of that belongs to, it's yours. The question, are you going to take it? It's yours. See, your problem is, you got your mind on you too much. It's not about you. It's not about, it's about Jesus. It is 100% about Jesus. If I have success, give God the glory. If I fail, the blood of Jesus. Come on. It's not about you. So here we go. So I can finish my little sermon in. Say this with me. I'm blessed. Come on. Say all that stuff. It's mine. Say it again. All of it. It's mine. You know what I like? That? He, he will command the blessing upon you. Do you know what that means? That means it's on you whether you want it or not. You don't have a choice to be blessed. You bless whether you want to be blessed or not. If you didn't want to be blessed, you should have stayed a sinner. If you didn't want to be the head and not the tail, you should have stayed a sinner. If you didn't want to be prosperous and wealthy, you should have stayed a sinner. Because when you made the decision to make Jesus Lord over your life, watch this here, the blessing comes with it. Come on. That's part of it. It's part of the program. Huh? Now, with all of that in mind, listen, change your perspective on money and blessings going forward. Because I, the one thing I just did is demonstrated to you that all of my help come from the Lord. Good God. I just made that very clear to you. Everything I got come from the Lord. Because I couldn't, I, I, because I couldn't pass the if test. But Jesus passed the if test for me. And since Jesus passed the if test, everything I got, it coming from the Lord. I ain't got nothing to brag about. I ain't got nothing to boast about. 
and says he the one passed the if test that he gave me all the money, then I got to do with the money what he tell me to do with the money because it ain't mine anyway because I couldn't even pass a little simple if test. Does that make sense? Here we go. I got about two points and I'm going to be done. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse number 18. Yeah. Good. Give me 10 minutes. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse number 18. Solomon said, here's what I've seen. It is good and fitting for one to eat and drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor in which he toils all under the sun all the days of his life which God give him for this is his heritage. Verse number 19. As for every man to whom God, watch carefully, to whom God has given riches and wealth. He's talking about you. I just drew that picture for you. And given him power to eat of it, to receive his heritage and rejoice in his labor. Somebody said rejoice in his labor. You see that? Watch this. This is the gift of God. What's first point I want to give you of three? You got to enjoy the money that God gave you. I believe in tithing. I believe in giving offerings. I believe in sowing other ministries. I believe in helping people. I believe in all that stuff. Watch it. But I'm going to take some of that money and enjoy my life. Huh? Don't get mad on me because I get mad at me because I go on a cruise. Are you crazy? I mean, I go to New York, somebody cop an attitude. What you mad about? Plane had a lot of empty seats on there. Matter of fact, if you'd have called me, you could have went with me. I don't care. It don't matter to me. What you, what you mad about? What you mad at Deacon Williams for because he got a Corvette? Man, sit yourself down. If you want a Corvette, BMW, let him get one. What you mad about? Pastor Hall got a Cadillac and Stacey Adams. Come on. He old school. Come on. He told me, he told me when I first come here, he said he told y'all one time, I came here wearing Stacey Adams, I'm going to leave here wearing Stacey Adams, and by God, he still got Stacey Adams on. Because he know you got to enjoy the money that God has blessed you with. You can't save it all, you sure don't need to spend it all, you got to start enjoying some of that money. He said it is the gift, somebody say gift. What you earn on your job is a gift from God for you to enjoy and, and, and lavish up on your children and your grandchildren. Hallelujah. Go buy your grandkids a, a new dress. Go buy them some, some tennis shoes. Go bless some. Come on. That's what you're supposed to do with it. Quit getting mad at what everybody else do. Well, I can't believe y'all went, went there. I can't believe you went there. I can't believe this person went there. You just jealous and hateful. Because you haven't learned this concept I'm trying to show you. To what you, you're hoarding up all your money for when you retire one day. What's going to happen if you have a stroke before you retire? I'm glad you asked that question. Point number two. I'm, I'm still on, on point number one. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 17. Therefore I hated life. Listen to what Solomon is saying. He was old at this time. And, he was in, and Solomon got kind of, kind of, kind of uh, sarcastic in his older days. See, uh, Song of Solomon was written, written when he was a young romantic. Proverbs was written, written at the height of his uh, reign. And then Ecclesiastes was written when he was kind of old and kind of getting, you know, sarcastic. Verse 17, Ecclesiastes 2. Therefore I hated life because the work that was done under the sun was distressing to me. For all is vanity. He began to realize there ain't nothing in this world worth it. It's vanity and grasping for the wind. Verse number 18. Watch this here. Then I hated all my labor in which I had toiled under the sun. Because, watch this here, I worked hard, but I realized I must leave it to the man who will come after me. Leave that verse up there. He's telling you, you better go enjoy it because you're going to die and you're going to leave it to somebody else. What good is a half a million in a 401k and you're not enjoying none of it? You're going to die and it's going to go to somebody else. I'm just trying to pay my house off. Forget that house. I'd rather die with a note and enjoy my life than die with a house paid off and ain't never done nothing. But Caroline Nash says, you, no, that's just him. He says, I must leave it to the man who will come after me. Verse 19. Now watch this here. And who knows? 
whether that man will be a wise man or a fool. You're going to leave it to somebody, and you don't know if he's going to do good with it or do bad with it. Huh? Well, I'm leaving all my kids, all my money, and you don't even know where they at right now. I got news for my kids. I'll tell them to their face. If you ain't living right, I ain't leaving you jack. If you ain't doing right, I ain't leaving you nothing. Come on. I'm going to point you straight to McDonald's on my deathbed. McDonald's hired. Huh? So here's the, here's the point. You got to enjoy the money that God has blessed you with. There's nothing wrong with wearing red bottom shoes. There's nothing wrong with wearing Gucci. There's nothing wrong with shopping at the mall. Come on. You got the money, shop at the mall. And if you're still shopping at discount stores, enjoy the discount store. It don't matter. I'm just telling you, enjoy what God has blessed you with. Look at somebody real quick and say, because I show him. I'm working on some stuff, y'all. I mean, I'm just working. I'm, they opened the gates back up, and I'm, I got some stuff playing overseas, and, and I'm looking at a cruise ship, but folks on there sick, I ain't going to do that. But I got some stuff in the shoot. Come on. I'm going some places. If I'm going to go, if I have to go by myself, but God has kept me. God has took care. Good God Almighty. He's given me the health and the strength to survive 23 years in the Army. Now I'm 56. I'm still working 40 hours a week. I'm trying to do ministry at the same time, and God is blessing me. So you know what? I'm going to enjoy what God has given me. learn how to go on vacation in people's face. When people, somebody tell you they don't, don't like you, go buy a Cadillac on them. I'm going to give you a reason not to like me. Jesus said they're not going to like you first because they didn't like me. They was mad because I took money out of the mouth of a fish and paid my taxes. They was mad because I took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed 20,000 people. They was mad at me because I opened up the eyes of blind men. They was mad at me. And they weren't mad at me because I'm me. They was mad at me because I'm blessed. Luke chapter 12, verse number 13. Luke chapter 12, verse number 13 says, that's point number one. Point number two, Luke chapter 12, verse number 13. Then one from the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Isn't it funny? When somebody died, we like to fight. I ain't figured that out yet. Let me encourage you, because this ain't the point, but I just want to encourage you. Listen, don't die without a plan. All my past friends, and this church in included, there is no benevolence to pay for your funeral. So don't call and ask. I knew I wasn't going to get no amens there. There's no benevolence to pay for your funeral. Food, clothing, a little bit of shelter, light water, gas, okay? We ain't paying to put you in the ground. Verse 14. Jesus said to him, but he said to him, man who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you. Next verse. Maybe not hold, hold right there. Verse 15. And he said to them, take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Here's my next point about money. Always remember this. Money does not make the man. A man's life does not consist and it's not made up of the stuff he possesses. Just because they got money don't mean nothing. It's amazing. You give some folks, they ain't never had nothing. They grew up in the same projects we grew up in. I mean, they grew up in the same projects we grew up in, rode the same city buses that we rode, 
Then we went to the same commodities, got the same government cheese. Y'all remember the commodities? Same government cheese, that same good, good butter, they make them good cakes. Y'all remember that? Come on. Got the same commodities we got. We wore the same kids, K-E-D-S. Come on. Huh? Play drunk out of the same water holes in the summer. Come on. Grew up in the same hood. Chased the same little girl, same little boys. Watch this. Graduated high school. Watch this. Got a Pell Grant. Because you didn't have no money to pay for college. Got a Pell Grant. Went to, went, to, went to college on the government. Got a degree. Now you making six figures. And now you all that. You, 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 you not all that. You ain't, you, stop being too good for people. Stop acting like you can't speak to people. Stop turning your nose up at people. We know where you come from. You're not fooling us. Matter of fact, yo, my mama used to loan your mama food. Come on. Because y'all wasn't eating and we hadn't loaned y'all no food. Y'all wasn't going to have no clothes and we didn't hand y'all our hand-me-downs. And now you got nice stuff and you think you better than all of us? Are you crazy? I got to go. Listen, I promise you, the cemetery, the grave of a rich man looked just like the grave of a poor man. And Jesus says, yes, you are blessed, but don't never think that the blessing makes you who you are. It does not do it. It does not do it. It does, it does not do it. So when God gets ready to move you higher, come on, and you grasp the concept of his grace and faith and you begin to access his blessings, always be willing to lend a helping hand to somebody else. I can't stand a stank-nosed preacher. I can't stand him. You got a little stinking degree. You got 50 people coming to your church. Now you somebody. What? And if anybody ought to be humble, it ought to be preachers. Because you know God holding you. I better leave that alone. Last one, I'm done. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 26. Matthew 16, 26 says this here. Oh, good. Okay. For what profit... This is my last scripture. Is it to a man if he gains the whole world? Remember the beginning of this sermon? I told you at the beginning of the sermon, God giving you the world. So he ain't just talking about sinners here. He's talking about us. Matter of fact, in Deuteronomy 8, 17 and 18, he amplifies this point when he gets ready to take them to the promised land. He said, when you get to the promised land, don't forget me. The promised land only had one commandment. The law was given to tutor us and carry us to Jesus come. But life in the promised land only had one commandment. And that commandment was, don't forget me. Man, I'm about to cry. Don't forget me. Remember, I'm the one that carried you 40 years. I'm the one that made water come out of a rock. I'm the one that rained down manna from heaven. And when the manna wasn't good enough, I made the quail to come in so you could eat some quail. Remember me when you get your brand new job. Remember me when you get your house. Remember me when you wearing your red bottom shoes. Remember me when I seen you on vacation to Australia and Africa and all over the world. Remember me when I seen you on a seven day cruise all down in the Caribbean. Remember me! Hallelujah! And you ask me why I pay my time. I don't pay no time. I give them to him. He got to beg me for no, I'm going to give it to him. What profit is to a man if he gains the whole world and loses only soul? 
Stand on your feet. God is telling you today, I give you everything. You're a born-again believer, and you ain't even trying to be a Christian. I still, I still bless you. My blessing is not contingent upon how you act. I'm not going to begin to try to act like you. I'm not, I'm not a human. I'm not a man that I lie. I bless you, and I ain't taking it back. Huh? You don't want to come to church, you're blessed anyhow. You don't want to give me no time, no offer, you're blessed anyhow. You want to lie, fornicate, adultery, all this stuff, are you blessed anyhow? Because you my child. Huh? Your problem going to be, watch this here, when you live like that, your own conscience going to condemn you. And then you can't use your faith to access everything God gave you. But God wants you to know, when you ain't walking in it, it ain't my fault. Well, I didn't send Jesus to the Christ one. We ain't dying no more for you. So if you want to live a life of fornication, you go right head on. You still my child. You're going to die and go to heaven. You might get there sooner than you want to. But watch this here. Don't blame me because I've done my part. I want to encourage you as I end this. Don't put money before God. Don't do it. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Don't put no property. You got a lot of young folks we talked about this earlier. Try and do entrepreneurship. You ought to do entrepreneurship. But don't try to be an entrepreneur and forget about the Lord. Hmm? Remember God. Remember God. Remember the Lord. Remember your Savior. Gain the whole world making big plans and then you have a stroke and can't enjoy none of it. A heart attack and you leave here before your time. What good is it going to do? What good is it? It's not going to amount to nothing. I offer Christ to you today. There's only one way out of this world the right way and that's through Jesus Christ. He sacrificed and gave his life for all this stuff I just told you. He don't ask you to change. We, don't, we stop in there. You don't come to Christ. I don't want to hear nothing about what you're going to change. Because you're going to tell me I'm going to change this and you ain't going to change nothing. I just want you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here today and the Lord is speaking to your heart to give your life to him, unite with this church, rededicate your life, I invite you to come. Amen. If you're in the building, you can come. Neil, would you sing something? Is he up there? Amen. If you're out there in Facebook land, hallelujah. Send us a message as we minister to you. Hallelujah. My grandbaby come and give her a hand. Hallelujah. Amen. She told me she went to that camp. and We're sending all our kids next year. And they got to praying for them. And she got saved. She came back and told me I got saved. Huh? I didn't push her. Her mama didn't. Didn't nobody push her. She came back and said, I'm giving my life. I gave my life to the Lord. So she getting baptized for a Sunday in August. Amen. Hallelujah. Lights. Come on. Hallelujah. Anybody else? If your grandbaby. This is my season. If your grandbaby, your children want to come, let them come. For faith. We trust them. Yes, Anybody else need to come? This is. Hallelujah. Will you trust him? Huh? Will you trust him? Will you trust him? Hallelujah. This is my seed. You know you need a change. For grace. Hallelujah. You know you need a change. Come on. For favor. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is my season. To be what I else? Hallelujah. Will you trust him? I haven't been perfect. You hear that? Will you trust him? But I show sure been faithful. Coming in the balconies to come. See God's got a Hallelujah. purpose. Will you trust him? And I know he's able. I've got to see Will you trust him? That he's blessing, no more stressing. I've got a seed in the Hallelujah. ground. Now I'm knowing and it's showing this is 
Steve Leakes is going to go to the foyer. Hallelujah. He's going to go to the foyer. If you're uncomfortable coming down here, I understand that. I, do, I don't mind telling you that if my big brother had not got up and went to the Lord, I might not be here today. When he got up, he gave me the strength to get up. That's right. Everybody don't feel comfortable coming down here. If you feel the compelling in your heart to come to Christ, to unite with this church, to rededicate your life, whichever one, maybe you gave your life to Christ, you've never been baptized, you need to get baptized, Reverend Leek's going to be waiting in the foyer for you. All he needs is your name, your number, and why you talking to him. And we'll get you hooked up. Facebook, send us a message. We got to go. Listen, i see you all this Wednesday night. Say it with me. We walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you this day and always. Fellowship with somebody as you leave.